It's the Morning Update with Drew Klein on 99.9 and AM 1370 WFEA. And we are pleased to have back on the show former U.S. Senator Kelly Ayotte, who's running for the Republican nomination for governor. Hey, Senator Ayotte. Hey, Drew. Great to be with you. Hey, great to have you on. So, so many things to get to. I think we should probably start with the news that's kind of still rippling through on immigration and um, this incident in Massachusetts with the uh, illegal immigrant who apparently is charged with uh, raping a 15-year-old disabled girl and the governor's comments in Massachusetts where she said uh, that we have the correct system in place here, but from time to time, things are going to happen. Um, yeah, no, I mean, what a troubling statement, really. Like, things are going to happen, meaning rape of a 15-year-old uh, disabled girl, you know, I think it really highlights, Drew, uh, what, first of all, what's happening over our southern border highlights what we don't want to bring here to New Hampshire, but also highlights what has happened under the Biden administration of just these open borders and this parole system. I mean, this guy got here because he was flown here, um, you know, a Haitian immigrant, and basically, Biden has given, administered, used his discretion under parole to parole like 30,000 illegal immigrants a month. Mm. And so it's just so troubling when you think about it. And then to, to hear Governor Healy, you know, kind of dismiss it, oh, these things are going to happen when she was asked, should these illegal immigrants be vetted more? Of course. I mean, first of all, they shouldn't be here. But to bring all these people in our country with no vetting, I mean, obviously we saw what happened um, in Georgia with that college student. Mm-hmm. But there just are many of these cases where, um, you know, these people who commit crimes in the U.S. shouldn't even be here in the first place. Well, and she started that statement with um, the systems are working well, which. Oh, my gosh. I mean, to talk about uh, you know, to say that the systems are working well. I mean, really? I mean, are they working well when you're being overrun and you essentially have to put illegal immigrants in Logan at night, close youth? youth uh, sports facilities. I mean, there's a proposal before the Mass uh, State Senate to have them spend another $800 million on housing illegal immigrants. How's that working? And then, of course, this poor, uh, you know, young woman who, you know, is alleged to be have been raped. I mean, it's just a horrible uh, situation to say that that is working. And, you know, why does it matter to New Hampshire? Because Governor Healy endorsed Joyce Craig, one of the leading candidates that's running for governor on the Democrat end. And Joyce Craig won't answer any questions about it. It's like she's got Governor Healy's endorsement and won't answer, where do you stand on Governor Healy's position on what's happening in Massachusetts? And it's really troubling. So yesterday I, I asked, you know, called for Joyce Craig to renounce this endorsement of, of uh, Governor Healy because this doesn't fit New Hampshire. Well, and she's also Governor Healy uh, came up here to campaign for Joe Biden and to you know and say the system works and she'll be surely campaigning for other. Oh of yeah, her party, she know? was up here in New Hampshire and as was by the way the mayor of Boston. Right. Um, you know, the, it, you think about the two of them and I and I Joyce Craig was campaigning with both of them, but she still won't answer any questions about where she stands on, for example, sanctuary policies for our state, mm. uh, whether she would support, you know, what's, how about driver's license for illegal immigrants? There's so many questions that need to be asked, but she won't answer any of them. So, and let's ask you, uh, Senator Ayotte, so where would a Governor Ayotte uh, be? We Because we're having this debate in the state Senate just right now on should the state ban sanctuary cities in New Hampshire? It's a clear answer, Drew. It's yes. <laughs> I mean, well, if easy. you look at what's, I mean, look, if you look at what's happening, and we just talked about what's happening in Massachusetts, but again, the most high profile case of this, this poor young woman, Lake and Riley, I mean, essentially that Venezuelan illegal immigrant was arrested in New York first, they didn't issue the detainer. And uh, of course, he goes on to, you know, murder Lake and Riley, it's just troubling. So we, we can't have a situation where we are a sanctuary and we're not cooperating with federal authorities when illegal immigrants are here in New Hampshire because it just leaves the state less safe. It doesn't make any sense. And also, you know, what we don't want is a situation where, you know, what we see happening over our southern border. I mean, we have lots of uh, our own homeless that we have to address here and it's an important issue. 
but we, we, we really don't want this to be a sanctuary state. Well, and we also have um, fentanyl coming over. But I, before we get to that, you have been using the term illegal alien. Uh, Senator Whitley and some others in New Hampshire are saying that's not appropriate. It's not sensitive oh, to call people an illegal alien. We should call them newcomers or something else. Um, they, you seem to think they're wrong. Uh, definitely. I mean, listen, Senator Gannon introduced the bill and he was testifying about it to prevent illegal aliens from having driver's licenses or recognizing those licenses from states that do um, do allow that. And I, I thought it was a great piece of legislation. And, Senator, you know, Senator Whitley's like, oh, uh, we shouldn't call them that. Um, I don't understand it because they're here illegally. So for to really talk about, it just doesn't make any sense. And so um, the language that Senator Gannon was using is the appropriate language um, for people who are here illegally. So um, we have bills to increase sentences, uh, mandatory minimum sentences for dealing fentanyl, for dealing fentanyl to result in, in death. Um, you know, and there's back and forth on that, I think, across the spectrum on whether that's the right approach or whether it's part of a bigger approach, whether better enforcement's are the right way to do it. And um, just wondering what your thoughts are on, on mandatory minimums for, you know, fentanyl and drug dealing in general. So, Drew, when I when I got in this race um, in January, one of the issues I raised right away is that I think we should increase the penalties uh, for fentanyl dealers because we have a situation where, you know, that poison is being trafficked into our state. A lot of it comes through um, over the southern border to Lowell, cities like Lowell and Lawrence, and it comes into New Hampshire. And I think that New Hampshire be, should be the state where the drug dealers who are pretty smart, Drew, they're, they, they figure this stuff out. Uh, it has the toughest penalties uh, for trafficking in fentanyl and for pushing out that poison to people here in our state. So I think that uh, tough penalties, uh, mandatory penalties for fentanyl dealers are, are appropriate. And I've been running on that from day one. So we have a couple of bills that are also kind of, I guess, getting some media attention in uh, the legislature on uh, sports and education stuff. And so there's a bill in the Senate, and there's a bill in the House to mandate that high school athletics have to be divided by sex. You have men's team, you have a women's team, men can't compete on the women's team, and you can have a co-ed team if you want to do that, but you can't sure. have those mixing of the sexes in the sports. Um, how would a Governor Ayotte respond to a bill like that? A Governor Ayotte thinks that that makes sense. I mean, my daughter Kate, she played soccer, basketball, lac lacrosse, and she worked really hard uh, as an athlete to, you know, get better at her sports. And in fact, I mean, I'll, I'll brag as a mom, but her junior <laughs> year, she won three state championships. A three? Is that and, all? That yeah, that's slacker. it. Really? Uh, so I, I get to be a bragging mom here, but <laughs> this is an issue of fairness, Drew. Yeah. You know, women, women have worked really hard uh, in sports. Uh, to get better, to ha there are more women's sports teams. You think about the underlying purpose of Title IX and the expansion of women's sports, both in high school and college. And I really think that, you know, allowing biological males to compete um, in high school and college and, and in other places is just fundamentally unfair. And so to me, that legislation makes sense. And, you know, if you want to stand up for women and women in sports, I think that's really what your position should be. All right. Well, Senator Ayotte, thank you so much for joining us today. I uh, appreciate Drew. your time. Have a great day. All right. You too. And we will be right Thanks. back Bye. on the WFA Morning Update on 99.9 and AM 1370 WFEA.